Is there a shortage of coffee going on? Two restaurants in the past two days have been out of coffee and they are major chains, McDonald's and IHOP. <laughs> Tell me in comments if it's going on where you're at. Is there a shortage of coffee going on? Well, this morning I went to a different place and got my coffee, <laughs> Little America. Um, yeah, McDonald's was out of coffee. Can you believe it? I mean, seriously, McDonald's? We go to, um, Paul and I go to McDonald's uh, for coffee in the morning now because I just got tired of making coffee in my van. It was messy and senior coffee was only 79 cents. So what the heck, right? Well, I'm Minivan Lee, in case you didn't know that. And I've lived in my minivan for six years. And I haven't done a coffee chat in a long time. So here you go. Here's coffee from Little America. Oh, it looks like some of it went down. Yeah, it was a little more expensive than 79 cents. But it's well worth it that we get to share coffee this morning. It's an inside day today. You're probably going to hear rain dripping down on my roof which sounds kind of cool, doesn't it? I love the rain. So what do I got to talk about today? You know, there's a lot of things going on in all of our lives. There's a lot of changes going on. And one change is autumn's almost here. Summer is almost over. It's getting towards the end of August. Now down in Southern Arizona and in other parts of the world, um, it's still really hot, right? And even on, on the other side of the equator, um, you're going to start going into summer. So, But I think in the next couple of months, we're all going to get a little reprieve around the globe, right? Because if you're in Australia or New Zealand, I mean, summer, you, you have a spring. So it's not going to be really hot yet. So cheers to cool weather. Cheers to being comfortable. It's been a really rough summer, hasn't it, everybody? Mm. So, so, so good. That's really as good as uh, McDonald's coffee. And I've really fallen in love with McDonald's coffee. I found this at a resale shop. This is so precious. A little bow on it. This just intrigued me so much. It's weighty, but not too much. It's very well made. It's a dee -dee little camera. But then I discovered, I'm not really sure why, but that goes down. And there's a picture of a rose in there. Isn't that amazing? Yeah. And it's a really nice um, chain. And it's really gorgeous. Is It hangs down and it's got a little... A little heart on there. <laughs> I love it. So I thought I'd wear it today. Yes. Got my red bracelet on. And I've got this on. I really do uh, like this bracelet. It's expandable, but it's metal, silver, with little pink rhinestones in there. I'm really into jewelry right now. My daughter sent me some jewelry back that was mine. And um, I told her, well, if you're not going to wear it, she says, yeah, I'll send it back to you. I've been picking it up and offering it on minivanlee.com, right? Minivanlee.com. Revamped website. Well, okay. Faith and trust. Faith and trust. I saw this, uh, I, you know, you got reels, you got shorts. I don't know. You know, you just, they're, they're just little qu uh, quick videos that are in, um, portrait style. They're not landscape like this is the size, but I think it was Russell Brand. And he mentioned, he talked, he read a letter by this lady named Jane and she was talking about, she was getting older. Is there, and how can she handle getting older? There's things going on in her body that she cannot stop well i think we all go through that and i do want to talk about being young and being older um in just a minute but this really resonated with me oh my gosh um he's become quite a social media 
celebrity, Russell Brand. Now, I think that's his name, Russell Brand. He was married to Katy Perry previously, and then they divorced. But um, <clears throat> he's he's pretty cool. He's He's got that English accent. He talked about faith. He goes, you have to have faith, but you have to have trust. Also, like if you are at a circus and you're looking up and you see um, somebody doing the tightrope and they have a wheelbarrow and you, you, if he's up there, you have faith that he knows what he's doing and he's capable of taking that wheelbarrow and going across on the tightrope. But do you trust that he can do it? Are you willing to get inside that wheelbarrow up there? Because you had faith he could do it, but do you trust him enough to actually get inside? That really resonated with me. And it really does coordinate with, with our beliefs, our spiritual beliefs. We have faith, but do we trust? There's where the rubber hits the road is in trusting. So I was just thinking about being young and being old, but up here. I go to the senior center quite often, Paul and I go, and there are some real characters there. They're just adorable. Some not so adorable, <clears throat> but um, sometimes it's hard to crack, crack the egg to get inside. Even though we were here last year, and we've also been here this summer. Um, there are some people, they just stick to themselves. Everybody has issues going on. They just do. Whether it's um, they're thinking about something else or they have cognitive issues as they get older. So you really do have to, um, you know, give them, give them that. Give them that space in that way. There's a couple of them that actually talk to themselves and they obviously have other mental issues all going on too. Voice is a little cracky. I didn't sleep real well last night, so. But I did want to talk about being young and being old up here in our mind. <clears throat> we, I've come to the conclusion that each of us decides our lives through our mind. It first happens up here. Now I know a lot of you are faith-based. Are you trust-based though? <laughs> That's the question. You're faith-based. And if you aren't, that's okay because this applies to everybody. But I know some of you faith-based are going to say, well, no, he decides everything for me. I disagree. I really do. We have free will. Now, you can follow your spiritual leader. And there are many, a lot of you have different faiths. But what is your life going to be like as you're following your, lead, your, your spiritual leader? How, you know, your God, how are you going to live your life? That's your decision, isn't it? Now you can be, you can be broke or poor. I never like to say poor. I say broke. You can be broke or you can be plenty. That's your decision up here. That's This is my decision up here. I decide those things because the decision is up here in my attitude toward life. You can go, you can go down. We can all be traveling down the same road, but we're going to be traveling it totally different than the next person beside me. One of you has a large, a big car. One of you has a little car. One of you has a beat up car. One of you, but we're going down the same road and we're going to the same place. So I just wanted to remind you, if that's the way you want to look at life, that's the way I do, you know, um, our attitude and how we present ourselves to the world and who we are. Do we put on a mask? Do we not put on a mask? Are we authentic? Are we not authentic? Are we just fooling ourselves and fooling everybody else? Or are we being honest with ourselves and with others? Well, isn't that up here? Isn't that our own attitude toward life? The faith 
and the trust, faith or trust. You know, we can have faith on a lot of things, but do we trust? How are we going to present ourselves? Now, the young people, when, when you're younger, you kind of, you have more of an open mind to different ideas. You got your basic idea. You got your basic truths, but there's all these little gray areas in between on how we choose to live our lives. Are we going to be open to new ideas? Like, well, yeah, maybe that's possible. Maybe I just haven't thought of that. I'm going on all that my parents taught me, right? But maybe your parents didn't know everything. And there's all these new enlightenment ideas. And this is not new age. This is just life itself that we get open to new things. I mean, even the way we look at nature, we can look at nature and go, oh yeah. And then all of a sudden we have this paradigm shift going, wow. Yeah. I mean, those trees probably do have the same root system. And that's just an example. And to open our minds to new ideas, we should always be learning new things. And so are we going to be childlike or are we going to be old and closed up? Have we let the old in? Have we let the old in? There's where, <laughs> there's where my, my question always comes in. Do not let the old in for me. And have you let the old in? Because once you let the old in, it's just a matter of time. Right. It's just a matter of time. You can't, I, I say, don't let the old in. And two years ago, I had a meetup in Quartzsite. And my friend Deb quoted that. I think she quoted it from somebody or a movie. Don't let the old in. But it really stuck with all of us gals that were in that um, round table. I'll leave the link for that. That was a, that was a really good round table of um, older ladies. And we were all having a conversation inside Polinar's, my, um, our big Kodiak, um, I think it's 14 by 10 canvas tent. What a nice tent. We still have it. So don't let the old in. Keep your mind fresh and childlike. And that was one of the verses in the Bible app today, being childlike, being children of God. And it really made me think, and I, I, I've been thinking about this, to be childlike. I am, I am very childlike. I was the youngest in the family. And I've always had young thoughts. I always have wanted to follow. What are young people thinking about? What are they, how, their eye, you know, young people, their eyes are open of wonder. And I think it's important for us to keep that. So however you can get that in your mind, because your life, how you live your life is really up here first. They say that every, everything that's been created happens twice. It happens in the mind, in the word, and then it materializes. It just does. Uh, so everything really is created up here first. And then nothing that is here was just, um, it was, it was created by a word inside of our mind, a thought, and then bam, then it becomes and materializes. Does that make sense? <laughs> does that make sense? Um, yeah, I know we haven't done a coffee chat in a while, have we? Well, <clears throat> what's married life like as a nomad living in separate vehicles? <laughs> it's pretty darn cool. I'm really enjoying it. I really am. So what's up? <laughs> you slept good? I did. Okay, good. Yeah. Kind of an unusual marriage, huh? Yeah. We're talking through the window to each other. It's kind of cute. Well, that's what we have to do. We don't have any choice. Oh, everybody has a choice, but I like it. Okay. Okay, and he's got a spider up here. Wonder how he got there. 
You have a spider on your, he's gonna get well, in. Do you suppose that he hitched a ride from where we slept or did he come down from the light pole up there? No, he's he's been hanging on probably, I would imagine. Oh, hanging on for dear life. I wow. know, just like the rest of us, huh? I We're guess. all hanging on for dear life. That's right. Okay. Okay, well, we're drinking our coffee, and I'll talk to you later. Okay. <laughs> we have our long time. Like, this is my this is my space. This is my van. And Paul has his van. And it's actually pretty cool. I really enjoy it. Like, I wake up alone, and that's, that's cool. I, I really enjoy it. And a lot of you have said that you are married, and that's the way you live your life. Um, you have separate bedrooms. You have separate... Um, separate ideas and separate interests and then you come together when you want to come together so now Paul and I what we've been doing is going to restaurants more often and like we do a, a morning an afternoon and then an evening before we go and park for the night and we have, we haven't been eating a lot we do <laughs> we downloaded a lot of the um, apps for fast food and um, we got Wendy's and McDonald's and Burger Burger King. And so we've been going to Culver's too. But we also have the Senior Center. And we discovered another place also where you can get, um, they serve, it's, a, it's like a food pantry place. Uh, no questions asked. You can ask for as many meals as you want. But um, they serve <clears throat> in the afternoon, you can get a sack lunch. And then in um, between 4 and 5.30, you can get um, a box lunch. And that place is packed. Did you know that Flagstaff has a minimum wage of, <clears throat> I think it's almost $18, $17 and some cents. Now, minimum wage in Arizona is, the basic minimum wage is $13.85. <clears throat> but Flagstaff decided to make it a minimum wage of almost $18. So believe it or not, um, it's very expensive to go even to a fast food place here because all the workers are making almost $18, which is more than what I made and that a lot of people are making across the country at Amazon doing really heavy physical work. So, um, it makes it very expensive to live here. Rents are high. Everything is high, uber high in Flagstaff. So there's a lot of people needing to use all of the food banks and the, and the senior centers and the uh, everything, the food pantries. I mean, it's, it's, um, it's almost imperative for people to do that. So I would say it would be really good idea if you were a nomad to come up to Flagstaff in the summer and actually work. I mean, you don't have to pay rent, right? But you come here and work, you could be making like $18 an hour or more. Maybe they're paying even more. But yeah, so that's just a suggestion. But we've been, <laughs> we've been going, so back to the marriage thing. I digress. I kind of whoo, moving along here. Um, what we've been doing is then we can set and we set for an hour each time. So we get different scenery every time we say, well, which one do we want to pick? And we'll go there. And what we do is we get something and we share it like to get like a, um, an egg McMuffin. We just cut it in half and we share it and we drink coffee in the afternoon. We can go to the senior center or we can go to the food pantry, or we can just go to a restaurant like Cracker Barrel or something like that. But when we do, um, not the senior center, but when we do go to a restaurant, we cut it in half. That way we're not eating so much, but, and not costing so much, but we get to share. And I just want a little bit to eat here and there. And, um, it's pretty darn cool, but there's where we can get our, um, alone time, our one-on-one -on -one and planning, planning our life, planning our lives in our minds <laughs> and, uh, and, and chatting and just laughing and just sharing each other's company. Um, I do enjoy being married. Oh my gosh. Yes. Now, a lot of you have followed Paul and I through when we met and then we, we broke up at least five or six times, maybe more that you don't even know about, but we just like, I'm done. I'm through. <laughs> I'm done. 
Well, we made that commitment and we did it before God and we made that commitment. And I'll tell you, it's, it's been great. We, we decided no matter what. And so everything has to be worked out. And at, in the nomad world, I mean, if you really click with somebody and you, you find that, wow, I don't think I can live without this person. I'm so with this person. I love this person. I don't love every little thing about this person, but I, I just don't see my life without this person. Well, I recommend it. I mean, seriously, you don't have to give up your social security. I found that out. You don't have to do anything like that. Um, once you do get married, though, you do have to share in expenses if something goes wrong, things like that. But I really recommend it. It will change. It will change. Um, well, it did mine. It changed the way that I interact and Paul interacts with me. And um, we're just a little more gentle with each other emotionally. Yeah, I like it. Now, <laughs> I've met some people that are older and we'll tell them, oh, yeah, we, we got married. Yeah. And we knew them. And they, and there are some, I really got to say that some, you can tell they seem bitter. They go, one person we told um, at the senior center, and they're really nice people. I mean, very intelligent college graduates. I mean, they're not, you know, um, he's, he says, oh, he goes, he goes, well, that doesn't sound good, sound financially, you know? And I'm like, why would you look at it just in finances? I mean, come on, you know, everything, we decide our lives up here, our attitudes. And if you're gonna look at everything just based on um, finances or, you know, if you're gonna lose money or not, what kind of a life is that? No, <laughs> no. Um, if you have faith and you trust, then you know that you'll be taken care of, right? And everything will be okay. You look, you expect good outcomes. And then the next time I saw him, he says, he goes, oh, so how's marital bliss? But he said it like that. I'm like, ooh, it's, you have tones of bitterness. Oh my gosh. <laughs> but Paul and I were doing great and it doesn't matter. Um, it's a personal thing and we're very happy. And I, I it's so if you are in that position and you've been with somebody a long time, don't be afraid to get married. Don't be afraid to make that commitment. You you may see, see a really big change in your relationship and find some real happiness that you committed to somebody and they're committed to you. And I think I think it's pretty cool being older also. So I'll talk more about that later. But I wanted to get back with you and do a, like a coffee chat. And it looks like I'm running out of time right now. But I love you guys a lot. There will be changes coming up in videos. And um, different ideas. Um, different methods of bringing you the videos. And different timelines of bringing you videos. So until next time, everybody, go to Minivan. I don't know where it's going to be. Go to mini. <laughs> You'll see it. Go to minivanlead.com and look for jewelry and look for, um, cause I got earrings and I've got necklaces and bracelets and please subscribe. Oh my gosh. Yes. It really helps a lot of you. A lot more of you are subscribing and I'm glad that summer's almost over. Um, for YouTubers, we don't get as much viewership in the summer. Only because, I mean, you're busy on vacation. You're busy doing things. You're outside. It's more in the winter that you get more of a viewership. So I look forward to doing more videos for you this winter. But I love you guys so much. Thank you for spending time with me today. And thank you for watching this all the way through. I love that. And um, thank you for supporting me because it does support me when you go on minivanlee.com. Um, you, when you buy net gators, when you buy jewelry and I've got gifts on there. If you want to give me a gift, support me. I love you guys till tomorrow. Bye.